Greetings at our friendly. It's me, the Necrofessor. You know, it's been a little while since we've done any plague news. So, I figured I'd, uh, catch you up on some of the goings on. Well, uh, to be perfectly honest, not really much has been happening. Just more sensationalism in the realm of plagues. I found this article from MarcoNews.com. Uh, part of the USA Today Network? Oh, jeez. Alright, strap in, folks. Okay, uh, this article was written by uh, Susie Cohen, a columnist. And it says, uh, Ask the pharmacist. Bubonic plague is on the rise. Now, okay, <laughs> before I start this article, let me propose a question to you. This is a marmot. Now, would you eat this marmot? No, I don't care if you're vegetarian. Would you eat this marmot? No, you don't get to cook it, I'm just saying. Would you eat this marmot? Would you take a marmot and just straight up, mm, just get down on a marmot, just eat its flesh and its kidney? Would you do it? Where's the lamb sauce? Well, what if I told you it had uh, some sort of folklore medicinal properties to it, that it was, uh, it would give you uh, uh, a healthy life and um, you would not gain any illnesses, especially the plague. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, a couple in Mongolia seem to have perished from uh, eating a bubonic plague-riddled marmot. Raw. Raw marmot meat. Yeah, go figure. I'll spare you the details, but I looked up that story and, um, yeah, they, they ate it. So, let's talk about bubonic plague from a medical standpoint, not a political one. Stay on target. We just started. It's making a new deadly appearance after being extinct for a long time in the United States. Controlling its spread is imperative to our safety and survival. It's making a resurgence, especially in California, and what's scary is that it spreads quickly. That's the pharmacist's nine fantastic reasons to eat pumpkin seeds. Just FYI, the plague was the second biggest killer on our planet, second only to smallpox. Okay, smallpox, you win. For now. Symptoms vary from person to person, however. The first sign is a fever with nausea and vomiting. Then there will be swollen, painful lymph nodes that occur in the armpits, groin, or neck. Skin sores are a hallmark, and they turn black. That's why bubonic plague is also known as the Black Death. Shortness of breath, coughing, and wheezing are possible too. But this is all elementary, we all know this. So let's get down on the real interesting stuff. People died from this so quickly that a large groups of folks were commonly buried in mass graves. Bubonic plague is on the rise here because of the perfect storm of problems. It's caused by a bacterium called Yersinia pestis. There is a debate about whether it's spread through the air, or by fleas, or both. But either way, it is a deadly disease. Okay, back that up. See, did you hear that? Not even the modern medical community is still 100% sure how the plague propagates. I want you to consider that for a moment. Right now, the most predominant location for bubonic plague is in California. But it's also popped up in Arizona and New Mexico. In Colorado, where I live, there was a wildlife shutdown in Denver last week. This was written on doo -doo -doo, September 9th. But California, especially San Francisco and Los Angeles, is where the humanitarian crisis is occurring. And we must do something fast. There is a lot more homelessness in these cities. This naturally leads to fecal matter being scattered on the streets. <laughs> Us, uh, this, this rampant homeless problem is leading to just crap everywhere. Just, I cannot, I, I, watch your step. In combination with rotting food, needles, and other trash, rats have made it their home because they thrive in the infestation. Aw, I like rats. The rats carry the fleas with the plague, which then potentially infect people and pets. Squirrels, rabbits, mice, coyotes, and other animals can be carriers. Not just rats. Good. Equal opportunity plague. So, 
Minimizing the trash and the rats would help in reducing the rate of infection. But strangely, California is proposing to ban anticoagulant rat poison, which translates to more rats, and in more cases of the plague. Sacramento was recently forced to close an outdoor playground because of the rats as they were naturally worried about children getting ill. These plague-ridden rats all over the playground equipment. Once inside the body, the germ explodes and essentially injects poison into special immune cells that are defensive in nature. Macrophages. Okay, I, I want to exaggerate my tales a little bit, but a, a germ does not explode. Whatever. Once knocked out, your macrophages can no longer detect the germ. The bacteria then grow wildly and quickly and kills the host, unless detected and treated very quickly. Reduce risk by treating your pets for fleas, and not letting them mix with rodents or wildlife. Do not mix a rat with your dog. Don't rub them together. Control rodents with rodent sides or traps. Wear insect repellents that works and keep your pets away from feces and remains of undead animals. I mean, I mean dead animals. Keep pets out of the bed. Avoid travel to areas that are infested. Do not come over to infested San Francisco, where the real problem is not the rats, it's the fleas. As for natural remedies, there is so much silliness on the internet. Trust me, rubbing your body with a chicken will not cure you of the plague. Uh, what is she talking about? What are you talking about, Susie? Hey, wait, hold up. Uh, I, have some, I have some ancient manuscripts right here. Oh, no, she's right. Yeah, there was old accounts of uh, using a chicken for medicinal purposes, such as rubbing it on your body to fight the plague. That's actually just not some random thing that would be made up. We're gonna have to look into this whole rubbing a chicken on your body to fight the plague thing. Hmm. More tests needed. Trust me, rubbing your body with a chicken will not cure you of the plague. Well, don't knock it till you try it. Neither will leeches. Well, hey, I mean, they may, they may not cure you of the plague, but certainly they have their beneficial properties. Come on down to my discount leechery. Doxycycline and gentamicin may be useful. Streptomycin is an older drug, which is one of our gold standards. One of our gold... What are you talking like? You're talking like some big pharma kind of jam. What's up with you, Susie? Susie Cohen is a registered pharmacist. The information presented here is not intended to treat, cure, or diagnose any condition. This is Susie Cohen. Okay, uh, wait. Pharmacist? What does it take to be a pharmacist? Before you can apply for jobs as a pharmacist, you'll need a state mandated training. A pharmacist needs a high school diploma or GED, a bachelor's degree, preferably in science or medical concentration, and a doctor of pharmacy. Phar what? When did this start happening? I gotta tell you, I have rats and they are absolutely verminous. They would devour my flesh if they had the chance. But they're adorable. I'm gonna